could go. Amen. So if you've got a Bible, let's uh, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And it's headed up, the Lord calls Samuel. In a way, this message is a bit of a prequel to Mark's message last week, which is absolutely brilliant, chosen. If you haven't seen it, get on the YouTube and watch it because that message is for you. And it's a prequel to that. It's called the Lord, it's headed up in the NIV, the Lord calls Samuel. And it says this, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. I like the detail. You know, all scripture is God breathed. There is nothing that God does not want, to do, want us to know. And he reveals it to, it to us by the word of God. And it says here, the boy Samuel. I like that detail because it takes away, right away, the age barrier. You're never too young and you're never too old. You're never too young to hear from God and you're never too old. You're not past it yet. God wants to do still a great work in your life. And it says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Samuel was lying by the ark of God which had the power and presence of God in it. And it says this, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. I want to ask you this morning as we read the word of God, has your fire gone out? Because God wants to reignite you this morning. He wants to reignite your passion for him and the fire in your belly for him. He wants to fill you with his power and the power and his presence of the Holy Spirit. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down. Then the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. My son Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not, not, did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. I love that verse. It will make their ears tingle. At that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called to him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, he do, do not hide it from me. May God deal with, with you ever so severely if you hide anything from me, he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appeal at Shiloh and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. The Samuel's verse, uh, chapter 4 verse 1 says this, before we sit down, and Samuel's word came to all Israel. Let's please take your seats this morning. Let's just be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that I am God. He wants to speak into your hearts this morning. 
a few weeks ago, uh, someone in this church sent me an email and it was a job uh, application that had come up that somewhere she had seen that a Christian charity was uh, looking for a Christian mission coordinator. And the email come through. And the email said, this is you. It didn't say it was for me. It said, this is you. And I took no notice of it. Um, a few days later, my wife said to me, have you seen uh, the email of the job description of what was sent to you? And I said, no, I haven't seen it. I said, well, you ought to see it. And she printed it off because I don't use a computer uh, very often. And um, I read through the do job description and it was for the uh, YMCA locally in the black country for a Christian mission coordinator um, doing alpha courses, Bible studies, prayer meetings and uh, pastorally looking after the staff and the residents of the four main residences in the YMCA. And I thought, oh yeah, there is me. I've been a Christian, um, not that I'm boasting by the way, um, I've been a Christian for nearly 30, 38 years, nearly 40 years, 38 years. For a good 25, 30 of them, I've been doing the Alpha course. For a good 25 years, I've been a part of the pastoral team here uh, and heading up the pastoral work, which is a bit of worry for all of you sitting down because any problems you will have it eventually <laughs> come to me. I'm glad you're laughing. But in those years, I've gained a lot of experience of how to get through life and overcome the things that come against us in life. And I was looking at this job uh, description. Oh, yeah, it, 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 it is for me. But I'm not good at doing job applications. So I got my wife and I said, will you do the uh, job application for me? Well, the, the end date was uh, a few Mondays ago. So on the Sunday night, she spent a couple of hours doing the job application, which she didn't thank me for, and she sent it off. To my amazement, the next day I had a call. I didn't recognise the number on my mobile phone. And there, and there came a call from the YMCA to say, we've seen your job application and we'd like you to come in for an interview. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not looking for a new job. I like the job I do. In fact, I love the job I do. I'm not looking for... A, anything to happen but all of a sudden the job has come to me from nowhere the job is something that I feel I can do and would be good at and all of a sudden I can see momentum gaining by God opening doors before me and taking me on a new career path currently as most of you will know I work with long-term unemployed people but perhaps now God is opening a new door for me and I do what I feel that we all should do when that happens is we just push forward when the doors open. We see what happens. We feel our way forward. So I said, yeah, I'll come to the interview. And he said, okay, it'll be next week on Monday night and it will be like speed dating. Now I'm old school. I don't do speed dating, especially now I'm married, obviously. I don't do speed <laughs> dating. Uh, I won't tell you, but I do know what speed dating is, but I won't tell you why. My wife is in the kids and the pastor's away on holiday, so we can have a bit of fun this morning. <laughs> he said, like speed dating, there's going to be four tables and you're going to go to each and every table after 10 minutes and uh, th they will see how well you do in the interview. So the, the interview night came and I went in to the YMCA and there was the four tables and I absolutely excelled in telling each table all about me. It's something that I've become very, very good at. <laughs> Telling people how good I am. I'll tell everybody in my work now, I wouldn't say I'm the best, but I'm certainly in the top one. But anyway. <laughs> I am feeling... Anybody been for an interview? I've only been to five interviews in my whole working career, by the way. So having an interview made me very nervous. Anybody had an interview recently? You get a feeling of how you've done, don't you, when you're in the interview? You get to know how things are going, things that you get a vibe, a positive feeling. And I had a very positive feeling of how the interview was going. And uh, I got back in my car at the end and I was driving home and uh, I found my wife and I said, how did it go? I said, oh, I smashed it. I got that job. 
Now I have to say, those of you who know me, I'm not a very confident person. So I did feel that I'd done well and I was going to be offered the job. Anyway, a couple of days passed and my wife was reminding me, have you heard from that job yet? No. Uh, thanks. Putting negative thoughts in my head, have you heard from the job yet? No. Okay. But a couple of days later, the company, they, the YMCA, they phoned me up. And I answered the phone. I recognised the number this time. And they said, bad news. And you know when someone said bad news and you think, I'm joking, I'm going to come out with good news, you know. Bad news, you're going to have to come and join us, you know what I mean? Bad news, you didn't get the job. Not bad news? <laughs> bad news, you didn't get the job. I said, okay, can I have some feedback? They said, yeah. The feedback is you actually interviewed the best by far. But we have to take people on by a points scoring system and someone scored more points than you. So I'm like, yeah. On my phone, I'm in my car, and all of a sudden, I wasn't looking for a new job. I wasn't looking to change jobs. I was happy with where I was, happy with what I was doing. But all of a sudden, I started to get a disappointment that they didn't want me. I started to feel, I'm not going to cry, I started to feel <laughs> rejected. God is speaking to you now. I started to feel disappointed. I started to feel rejected. I started to feel frustrated, I started to think in my head, I had loads of thoughts going on in my head, oh, what am I going to do now, do I stay in the job, is there going to be another job, am I going to phone me and give me that job, because I've made a mistake, obviously they've made a mistake, it's only going to be a matter of time, so they realise they should have took me on, <laughs> where do I go from here, what am I going to do now, why did that just happen to me, and you may be sitting here this morning, God wants to speak to you with the same thoughts. Where do I go from here? What am I going to do now? Why did that just happen to me? And here is the message today in a nutshell for you. God wants your attention. God wants your attention. And sometimes he allows and sometimes he leads us into biases so we can get it. God wants our attention because he wants to speak to us. God wants our attention because he wants us to listen. God wants our attention because he wants us to understand. He wants to speak. He wants us to listen. He wants us to understand. Because just like Samuel, there's a calling on our life. And if we don't listen, we don't hear him, we don't understand him. And if we don't understand him, he can't move. God wants your attention. When was the last time you gave God your attention? I've called this morning's message... Attention, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> I met with Pastor Mark uh, just last Wednesday in a, a little trustees meeting we had. And he said, how's your message going? I said, yeah, I've got it all sorted. It's called Attention, s'il vous plaît. I'm going to speak in French. We'll need subtitles. We'll need a translator. I could see the, co he's on holiday. I could see the color draining from his face. called it attention s'il vous plaît so you won't forget this message but also because when I think of the word attention now the Holy Spirit is a gentleman attention s'il vous plaît means may I have your attention please and God wants your attention because he wants to speak but I called it attention s'il vous plaît because when I think of the word attention, I always think back to our French lesson we used to have at primary school growing up in the 70s. And there used to be a little French teacher named Monsieur Cravine, come on his Vespa, but, but. He'd have his helmet on, he'd take off his helmet, he'd put it on the desk. The teachers used to disappear. They must have gone off for a coffee somewhere. They couldn't have gone to Starbucks because we were still in the 70s. There was no Starbucks. And they used to disappear, and he would take over the lesson, put his helmet on the, on the desk, he put on his beret, and he did something that I really hated him for growing up. He gave us all a little cardboard plaque with a French name on it. He gave me the name of René, and at that time I couldn't pronounce my R, so I was René. <laughs> it took me a long time to get over that. 
And just imagine now this guy who had very poor English trying to teach us kids off St. John's Estate, Kate's of the State, Council ki House Kids French. Every single week that class would descend into absolute chaos. <laughs> chaos. And he would end up every single week, and I always think about why didn't nobody come to uh, stop him, because they deserted him and run off for a, a break. And you come round and bang everybody's desk. Attention, s'il vous plaît. Attention, s'il vous plaît. Attention, s'il vous plaît. Yeah, what is he on about? What's he on? <laughs> and nobody took any notice. And sometimes God puts us into a place of chaos. Where we have to sit up and take notice. Because when God wants our attention, he wants to speak when he wants to speak, he needs us to listen. If we don't hear him, we don't listen. If we don't listen, we don't understand. If we don't understand, he can't move because we're not listening. God needs us to listen to his voice so we understand, so he can move. Every one of us in this place today. Oh, no. No, that'd be better off in the cricket match. If we're going to clap, come on, let's give it. Um, We need to listen. And God sometimes puts us in a place where we've got no choice but to hear from him. And you might be in that place this morning. You might look good on the outside. I need to lose a bit of weight so don't look like too much at me. And you've got that screen now that gives you every detail. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. But God sometimes puts us in a place where on the outside everything is great. But on the inside, it's just like that French class. It's in chaos. I believe today that God wants to speak into your circumstances, into your situation, and bring order to the chaos of your life. But we need to listen. Going back a few months, uh, my son had got very, very busy at work. And um, he had got an order where he had to transport a very, very large and very, very, very expensive sound desk um, from a place in London to the other side of London. So he said, Dad, would you go and do a delivery for me? I said, yeah, no problem, I'll go and do it. So I went to his workplace and picked up his transit van and um, I went down to a, a lovely place in the southwest area of London, I, I pulled up at the place and I picked up this very, very large, very, very expensive sound desk and uh, the guys were very busy there and they helped me get it in the van and, but then they had to do something called ratchet strap the, the load securely in the back of the van so it didn't move around. Now they left it to me and I haven't got a clue how to use a ratchet strap. I have never used ratchet straps before. All I know is I've got a transit van with the biggest sound desk I've ever seen, and it was, in my son's words, Dad, that is very, very, very expensive. That is hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of equipment. I said, okay, leave it with me, son. You can bank on me. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it in the van. I'm now I'm on, a, I'm on a time schedule to get to the other side of London by 4, 3 o'clock, and it's about 12 o'clock. Now, the traffic through the middle of London is very, very slow. Um, it takes hours to do a few minutes sometimes because of the traffic. So I, I set off on my journey, and I'm confident now I'm going, and I'm going to get there to deliver it at the, at, before the time schedule elapses. So I'm on my way. About a mile into the journey, I could feel this very, very large, very, very expensive sounders start moving in the back of the van. Anybody driven a transit van? You know when you can feel it eating the one side <laughs> and then eating the other side and you're driving and you're going... <laughs> that isn't stabilised at all and that is very, very, very expensive and it's my responsibility to get that very, very expensive centre to the right destination on the right time. So I pull over, and I don't know where to work, I'm in this whacking great long wheelbase transit van, and I pull over, and it's got residents only sign as I pull up in this beautiful suburb, uh, Twickenham area, and I thought, well, I think I'm a, 
an Uber Eats driver or a delivery driver every, you know what I mean? They think, they, 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 they think I'm just delivering something, I'll be all right for five minutes. At that time, it absolutely started to pour down the rain. So I'm in the transit van. I'm in a residential area that I shouldn't be in. I'm having to get in the back and use a ratchet strap, which I don't know where to use ratchet strap, and it's absolutely pouring around. You know when it's pouring around and all of a sudden you see massive great big floods coming out the drains? I'm talking it's raining like that. It's absolutely tipping it down. In the van, sounded like being in a caravan on your holidays. You know what I mean? When it's really raining and all you hear is the rain. I mean, you're really depressed. You might as well go back up. At the end of the day, it's absolutely tipping down. So much so that when I jump out, I think oh, I've quickly got to go and secure this lorry because I can't damage this very very expensive item because my son absolutely kill me if I damage if it's my fault so I jump out of the van I run around the back I open the door and I get in the van and I see that the hook has come off so I put the hook up and I ratchet the strap and to my amazement it gets um, secure again now I by this time I'm absolutely soaked for even just running around the front door to the back door I've got absolutely soaked as I'm securing it I hear a big bang we needed Delhi on the drums then, because he does a big bang. A big bang. Oh, that's no better. <laughs> the doors had slammed shut behind me. <laughs> if you're new here today and you're looking for a theological Bible-believing church, this is the main story of my message today. <laughs> because now I am absolutely soaked to the skin, with a very big sound desk, which is very, very expensive, I, I, and I'm locked in the back of a van. I go to the back of the van, and now when you hear it's locked, shut, and then you hear a ch -ch, and you know it's locked as well. The automatic lock has come on, and I'm banging the back of the doors, the rain's tipping it down on the van, and I'm thinking there's nobody going to hear you, and it is absolutely pouring, there ain't nobody going to be outside of that van, he's tipping it down around, I'm soaked. I'm thinking, I've found someone and ask them how to get out of this van. It's at that point things started to go very, very pear-shaped in my life. Because I realised that I'd left my phone <laughs> on the front seat of the transit van. It's at that point I then realised I'd left my wallet next to my phone on the front seat of the transit van. It was at that point... I knew I couldn't Google how to open the back door and I couldn't phone a friend either how to get me out. And as much as I would bang that back door, no one was going to be walking by in that moment to open it because it was absolutely tipping it down the rain. I was so, where are we coming down? What am I going to do? So I started to shoulder barge. You know, when things don't get your way, you start to panic, don't you? Anybody else? I mean, when you're really in it. When you're really up the swanee, you know, you start to panic. You start to do things in your own strength. So I start to run. <laughs> See, better for effect for the TV, I don't know. I start to run against the door. That door ain't budging. That door ain't opening. I then revert to slamming the door. Help! Help me! Help! I ain't kidding you. I had got so panicked, so worked up. So what am I going to do? In a residential area, that I'm starting now to think, and the thoughts are now filling my mind about I'm going to get a fine, I'm going to get his van a fine. It's going to be thousands of pounds where it is because I shouldn't be in here, a residential area. I've got my engine running, the keys are in the ignition. That's why the door is automatically locked. Someone is going to open the door when they realize it's running and take my phone. They're then going to realize and take my wallet. They're then going to realize and take that van. They're then going to realize that they've got a couple of hundred grand's worth of sound desk and take the van and take my wallet and take my phone and take the sound desk. Hold on a minute. They're going to rob me. I'm in the back. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I sat on that wheel arch in the dark, soaked, crying my eyes up. All I did was want to help him. Look at what I've done. Look at what I have come to. Look at what has happened to me. And in that moment, God had my full, undivided attention. 
I sat on the wheel arch. It's true as I'm, this is the reason I'm preaching this message. Because when they ask me to speak, which ain't very often, because you know why when you listen to me. <laughs> now listen, after this, don't say we want to hear more of him. You, re- you don't, seriously. You really don't. You really don't. Oh, no, you don't. No, 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 you don't. I promise you, you don't. This is the best I could come up with today. But as sure as I was sitting on that wheel, I was in a bad place, I'm going to be honest, I'd lost it. You know when things don't go your way and you're really trapped and you're really locked in and you're in a dark place, that's where I was physically, you know, but we're in there mentally as well and we've got all the noises about all these things are going to happen. You're going to get a fine, it's going to be robbed, you're going to have your, your no phone, no, how are you going to get this now just to where it should be, it's all going to, you've had it, it's over, you might as well give up. In fact, when you get out of here, you might as well end it all. My mother used to say to me, I'm going to put my coat on. It meant that I was going to go and go and end it all. And some of us can actually be thinking that right now because of the situation, the chaos of our life. And I prayed to God and I said, God, please help me. Straight away, I heard a voice. There's a catch on the door. If you pull it, the door will open. I sprung to my feet just like this. I said, there's a catch on the door. When I pull it, it's going to open. It's in dark. I'll get to the back door. I'm trying to think, no, there's a catch. I pulled the catch. Bang, it's open. I got out. It was tipping it down around. I ran round. I ran round the front of the van. There was my phone. There was my wallet. There were the keys. I got in the van. I raised my arms and I shouted, Hallelujah. And off I went. I got there. You might be feeling there's no way out. You might be feeling there's no way forward. You might be feeling I'm giving up. What you feeling like is like being locked in the back of that van, that dark place. But it's in that place where God gets out of tension. God wants your attention this morning. And it's in that place God will speak and show you the way. And we need to listen. Because there's a big difference between hearing and listening. Let's think about that right now for a moment. Then on, let's focus. There's a big difference between hearing something and listening to something. What is the best ex- explanation I could give about hearing something and listening to something? I'm not sure what the difference is, but there's definitely a difference because we hear a lot of things, but when we want to hear something, we listen to it, don't we? So here's a good example. Every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, me and my wife have a massive boss up. <laughs> it always happens about half past six. And when it, when it happens is this, I'll, go, I'll take you through it. It's the difference between hearing something and listening. If you come out from work, sometimes I cook the tea. <laughs> the bit of Italian, tagliatelle, nice cream chicken sauce, bit of chicken, mushroom, bacon. And sometimes she cooks it, beans on toast. <laughs> and we sit down and eat it. And then we're having our cup of tea, which I always make every night of the week. In fact, I always make every single drink in our house. <sighs> men take note. Bit of mentoring for you. Make your drinks for your wife. If you ain't got a wife, make your drinks for someone who you want to be your wife. She'll soon come to you. And we'll sit down, we're drinking our tea, and then she wants to tell me everything, every detail about her day at work. It works Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Wednesdays, when prayer and fasting, we get away with it. (laughs) Every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I have to sit down, I have to listen. I love to watch Pointless. I like to watch the Sky Sports News, the transfer activity. I've got to hear about all a day at work. Men, listen in now. Women, close your ears. I am an expert at the one-way conversation. She's talking about a day. Yes, love. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm. Yes, love, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way, yeah. Mm. Mm, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I am hearing her, but I am not listening because she has not got my attention. She hasn't got my attention because I'm listening to something else. It all goes very well, men, with my one-way conversation expert masterclass until she asks me a question <laughs> about her day. And I'll say to her, say that again, I didn't hear you. Bang, that's it, good night. <laughs> the mug's flying over to me, the plates are flying at me. She's got a belt and is coming after me. It's not that you don't hear me, it's because you're not listening to me. God wants to speak. I'm not paying attention. I'm just not listening. When was the last time you gave God your full, undivided attention? When was the last time you heard from God? When was the last time you took time to listen? I'm not paying attention, but if we want God to speak into our lives and take us out of the chaos of our lives, we need to listen. Because when we listen, we understand. When we understand, he can move. Let's have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. My, uh, recently, I've cleared out uh, my auntie's bungalow. She's moved from her bungalow into a care home. She's doing very, very well. And in it, she has, uh, in a garage, she had an old, under a blanket, stored away, an old radiogram. Anybody remember what a radiogram is? Yeah, a radiogram is a radio and a record player joined together in a beautiful teak cabinet. Um, it brought me memories back of when um, I used to sit there, we used to gather around as kids when there was nothing on the TV. You know, back in the day when you had BBC One, BBC Two, and uh, ATV, you remember those days? I'm talking to that generation. You had to put 50 pence in your telly to get it working. And sometimes there was nothing on the telly. I mean, we've got hundreds of channels now, and sometimes there still ain't nothing any good on the telly. But there was nothing any good. Our dad would get us sitting around the radio ground. And he used to say this, We've got, we're going to tune in to the police. And we all got excited, me and my brothers. Anybody else used to do this? We're going to cheer. You're showing your age now. We used to tune in to uh, the, the police. And uh, my dad would spend all night going through all the channels. You'd hear Radio Luxembourg, you'd hear European channels, you'd hear all sorts of channels and noise and, and, and all different things going on. And then all of a sudden, he'd say, we got it. Now, you've got to be still because it's illegal. And if they hear us, they might come and arrest us. <laughs> and this was serious. And we'd have to sit still. And we'd have to listen, and me and my brothers would be thinking, we want to hear about next door getting robbed or a car chase in front of our house. And all you could hear was like a fax machine going on in the background. <laughs> you had, you're looking at me going, because you must have had a young posh, are you? You had a better idea than us. And there was so much background noise that you couldn't hear anything. To listen to what was going on with the police. You had to sit there, you had to sit still, and you had to listen. And when you listened, there was nothing going on anyway. Sometimes our lives are just like that. We don't hear from God because we are not listening. We don't hear from God because there's too much outside noise in the background going on. We're worrying about things. We're getting anxious about things. We're worried about how we're going to pay the mortgage, how we're going to pay the bills, how we're going to do this. God wants to make a way, but if we don't hear from him, we don't listen. We don't understand. He can't move. We need to shut out the noise. Social media dominates our lives. What everybody's doing, why do they invite me? Is the first thing I look at when I look at social media and all my mates are out on Facebook. Why do you ask me to go? Where was my... And they've got the plates of food and I'm going, how do they afford that? Is what I'm saying. But some, we have to shut out the noise of social media or it can take over our life and that can have our full undivided attention where God wants our full undivided attention because he wants to speak to our love and move us out of the chaos that we are stuck in. We need to listen. 
And we need to stop letting rubbish thoughts come into our head. And we need to tune in to God. We need to understand what he wants to do in our life. We're going to look at three points that we can take from 1 Samuel as we finish up here this morning to help us to listen. Point one is this, if you're making notes. Pastor Gillian says she never makes notes. It made me feel rejected and never wants to listen to anything. I said, but I overcome that because it's been good this morning, hasn't it? So far, so good. Amen. And three points we can take from 1 Samuel to help us to listen. Point one is this, God is faithful and God is patient. Three times God calls Samuel by his name. But on the fourth time he responds and we understand when we read verse 7 why. And it says this, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Uh, Samuel didn't know it was God calling him because he didn't recognize his voice. He didn't know who it was. He didn't recognize who he is, what he was calling him. He knew about him, but he didn't know him. I want to say to you today, if you feel that your life is in chaos and going around in circles, that God is faithful to you and God is patient with you. And God will keep calling you because there is a calling on your life. When you get saved, that is not the end. I'm saved now, I'm going to heaven and I'm in eternity with Jesus. It's just the start of what God wants to do in your life. And God is faithful and keeps calling him. And God is patient with him because he wants to listen and understand the calling on his life. God is faithful to you and he's patient with you. But when did the last time you heard from God? Let's remind ourselves today that Jesus is alive. That our Redeemer lives. He's no longer in the tomb. That he comes and lives in our hearts. He knows us and his desire is for us to know him more. And that's when he wants to speak into our lives. I don't know what the voice of God sounds like. Well, I think you do. Let's think about it. I remember when I was saved on the field just outside of this church, when the church wasn't here, obviously, all those years ago. And I heard the message of Jesus and the good news, how he died for me, how he loves me, how he forgives me from my sin, and how he wants to give me a new life and come into my life. And the Bible said he stands at the door and knocks the door of your heart, and whoever opens it, he will come in. That's the promise of God. And I remember he hearing that word, and I heard the voice of God say, put your hand up and get down the front. When you put your hand up and get down the front, you have heard God because something has prompted you and that something is the still small voice of his Holy Spirit. The problem that we have is that's the last time we've heard from God. God is not in the tomb. He is not dead. He is alive. And he wants to speak into our situations because he loves you and he loves your life. And he wants to use you because just like Samuel, there is a calling on your life. Point two. God is calling you and he has a plan for you. Samuel's birth has answered to his mother Hannah's prayer. You can find it in Samuel chapter one, 1 Samuel chapter 1. In gratitude, she dedicated him to the service of Eli, the chief priest. He was raised and grew up in the temple, but that wasn't God's plan for him. Can you just imagine that, that he was answered to prayer, that as a, a young boy, he was taken to the temple, and that's where he was raised and grew up, and yet when God called him, he didn't recognize his voice. He didn't know him. He knew about him, but he didn't know him. I don't know what you're doing here today, whether your mates asked you to come, whether your mother's made you come, whether you're here because your just life is in chaos and you just need an answer from somewhere, you're desperate for something to happen. It's not good enough to just know about him. He wants to, you to know him. He wants you to know him in a personal way. He wants you to open the door of your heart and invite him in. At that point, where there was a calling on Samuel's life, there is a calling on your life. And I'll tell you now, what God wants to do will make the people around you, their ears tingle. Just like with Samuel. God has a plan for you. God's calling on Samuel's life was to be a voice to the lost. God's calling on Samuel's life is what we heard about last night. He was, last week, sorry. He was used as a transition to anoint King David, to bring the people, the nation of Israel, out of death and destruction under King Saul and into rule under King David who led them back to God. What God wants to do in your life and with what you are doing and with your testimony and the skills and what you're doing and in your workplace and in your family 
and with your children and with your mother and father and in your family and in your street is to be a voice to the lost and to bring people back to God. That's what God's calling on your life is. He wants to use you for his glory. It's gone quiet now. God is calling you. Point three, we need to listen because God wants to move. Attention, s'il vous plaît. You remember this message. Attention, s'il vous plaît. May I have your attention, please. God wants your attention because he wants to speak. He wants to speak because he wants us to listen. He wants us to listen so we understand. He wants us to understand so he can move and fulfill the calling on your life, the purpose that you were born. I don't know what I was called for. Well, when was the last time you listened? When was the last time you shut out the noise? And poor, poor me. And everything was going wrong with me. And why did that happen to happen? And why, where do I go here from now? God wants to do something powerful in your life, a lot more. His ways are higher than our ways. And God is building this church, our church family. And he's building it up for such a time as this. This church is going to be a voice into this black country area and beyond. Let's remind it that this church is not this five-star building. This church is a, a people. And God wants to use you and your skills and what you can do. And now God has done such a great work in your life to be that voice. We need to listen because God wants to move. We need to listen because God wants to move. Don't think that God does not want to move in your life. We just need to listen and then he will move. In 1912, the Titanic went on its maiden journey. As we know, the unsinkable ship sank. 1,517 people lost their lives. Not because of an iceberg, but they lost their lives because the designers were convinced that it was an unsinkable ship. And they only put 20 lifeboats on it. So when they filled the lifeboats, they were saved. Everybody else were doomed. Gone. Finished. They died because the designers failed to listen. 111 years later, this beggar's belief, don't it, when you think about it. 111 years later, five billionaires paid £250,000 each to go down to view the wreck on a submarine. On their way down, it imploded. There were warnings, what come out after, there was warnings about the safety of the submarine and some billionaires pulled out of the trip because they were concerned. They listened. The billionaires that lost their lives didn't listen. They are also now on the bottom of the ocean with the other 1,517 people. Can you believe in this day and age, with the knowledge that we have today, the people fail to listen? We need to listen. I watched this intently on the television, how it unfolded, and anybody was watching it, about what was going to happen. And that verse from Mark 8 come to me. What profit is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Jesus is the saviour, of our soul and it doesn't all come good when we die and go to heaven to be with him because when we open the door of our heart and he comes in by the power of his holy spirit our eternal life starts today i am a new creation today no more in condemnation but then god wants to do something powerful in our life and we need to hear from him it doesn't matter about your age it doesn't matter how young you are or old you are God wants to do something powerful in your life. You are here today, walking and talking. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't matter what background you have. God wants to give you a new start, and he wants to use you for his glory. Out of your mess becomes a message. Out of your test becomes the testimony. God has put you where you are today because he needs your attention. Attention. See, vous play. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to close. I love God because he's the God of the second. As only God can do this. The power of winning the national lottery does not do it. But God is the only God who gives us the power of the second chance. His name is Jesus. 
And whatever trouble we are facing, he is with us. And he's right there wanting to speak into our situation. Before we worship, I was texting someone in this church the other uh, night on a Tuesday. And um, as I was texting them the message, they were also uh, breaking up for a little bit of a holiday. And um, they needed a little bit of encouragement. They were going through a hard time. They wanted to see a breakthrough. Um, as I was texting, I thought, I wish I could text everyone in this room this text message. So have you got your phones ready? Uh, my number, somebody going for a phone there. Uh, I've got my number. Is oh, set, and I can't do that. I can't give it. To, I can't give you my number. But on the screen, you're going to see the text message. I'll move out the way. And it said this. The person will know who it is because they had this text message off me. Take these days to make time to listen because he will guide you into your best life. Take these days to make time to listen because he will guide you into your best ways. What is our response? We're going to worship. And as we worship, I want us to respond. And what is our response today? It should be the same as Samuel's in verse 10. And in verse 10 of 1 Samuel chapter 3, he says this, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Let's have ears to hear the still, small voice of God. He's not on a cloud. He's not got a long beard. He's not got a staff. He's not stamping the staff and pointing down at you and saying, Oh, no, you failed again. In the back of that van, I felt a failure. I felt an idiot. I felt that, I should be criticized for the stupid thing I've done. God is not like that. All he wants us to do is make time to listen to his voice and let our response be the same as Samuel's. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Come on, let's worship the Lord. As we worship, let's close our eyes. Let's shut out the noise. Let's lift our hands and let's invite the Holy Spirit, Jesus, to come and speak into our hearts and speak into our situation. Come on, let's worship the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Let's sing that again. Come on, you take. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take, you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. Come on, one last time we sing you take. Come on, we sing together. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What the devil meant to kill, crush, and destroy your life, God turns it around for the good of those who love him. Do you love the Lord tonight? Let's lift up our hands and shut our eyes. Let's just make time right now and be still. We're not being still in front of the radiogram where there's nothing to hear but noise. But we are still in the presence of God. And where his presence is, his power is. I want to pray for you today if you know of him, but you do not know him. It's time to get real. It's time to get honest with yourself. It's time to put your trust into his hands. It's all time to put, open the door of your heart, not your friends, not your neighbor. It's about you coming to know him. You asking him into your life. You inviting him into your life. You asking him to forgive you of your sin. You opening the door and his promise is he will come in. I want to pray for you today. Let's just lower our hands for a moment. If you never ask Jesus to be your Lord and Saviour, I want you to lift up your hands right now so I can acknowledge you and we can pray for you. This is your moment in time. This is where life starts for you. This is where he can turn what the devil meant for bad around for the good. This is where he can take your life and have a calling on your life and give you a plan and purpose for the reason that you were born. There's a calling for you and yet you have never put your trust in him. If this right now, this moment is for you, if you want to place your trust into Jesus' hands, just lift up your hands right now and join with us all as we pray. Let's thank God for everyone lifting up their hands right now across this auditorium. Let's thank him, come on. And let's pray this prayer right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I pray that you will forgive me. I pray that you will come into my heart. I pray that you will wash me clean. Be my saviour. Be my Lord. And be my best friend. Help me to listen. I invite you to speak into my life and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for my new start. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. There's a new day. If you prayed that prayer, we would like you to come to the front and receive a Bible and someone will want to pray with you also and help you especially if you've got any questions but I don't want to close without giving us an opportunity to respond for God because each of us are valuable to God that's why he died for us salvation is free we make a free choice it's a free will it's up to us but it cost Jesus his life but he willingly went on the cross to die for us so that we could live But let's be reminded right now that three days later, he arose by his resurrection power. And he ascended to his Father's side and he sent his Holy Spirit. So his Holy Spirit can dwell within us to show us the plan and purpose of why we were born. And it's no mystery. It is no mystery. It's not vague. God just wants to speak into our life. All we need to do is listen. This message... May I have your attention, please, spoke to you today. Let's just lift up our hearts, our hands and receive from him. And I want to pray for you this morning. Father God, I thank you for each and every hand raised today. I thank you for each person who is valuable to you. I pray that we will make time and we will take time and we will give you our full undivided attention that you will speak into our lives and show us the plan and purpose of what we were born. We thank you for what you are about to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a great shout of praise for what he's about to do. Abby's going to come up. We're going to do a song together. We're going to do a duet to go out with... No, we're not. No, we're not. No.
And this is the problem why they don't ask me to speak very often because they can't get me off the stage now. Thank you, Pastor Thank Tim. You. That was amazing. I'll just say, on behalf of everyone, we are looking forward to the next time you come back to speak. So what a great morning we've had to church. I just want to say to everyone who got their head lifted and prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God. You've done an amazing thing.